Greetings, drinking buddies. Today we're going to be continuing our Weeded Bourbon Tournament. Our two winners so far have been Old Rip 10 and Weller 12 Year. Um, today we'll be adding another winner to that group. And let's dive right in. I'm your drinking buddy. All right, drinking buddies, so I poured these four glasses, one, two, three, four, and then mixed them all up. Uh, I have a number on the bottom here, and so at the end I'll be able to figure out which is which. I have no idea at the moment. Um, let's highlight what each bottle is. Um, first up, I got this Fiddler Georgia Heartwood. Um, this is 58.2%, and it is a single barrel pick from Total Wine. Um, it sounds like these single barrel cask strength versions are only going to be picks, but if you have Total Wine in your areas, I've heard these are all over at Total Wine. So I would look for this. I did have a pour out of it, and I think it's excellent. I, this is the one I think what I'm expecting to win. But what, before I get too set on how much I like it, I thought I would complain about it a little bit. In a recent video, I talked about transparency. Even on their website, they don't tell where they get this from. People assume it's the MGP weeded bourbon because it does say 45% weeded on their website and they say it's sourced. And sourced 45% wheat pretty much narrows it down to MGP, but I would really like some more transparency on here. Fiddler, please do that for us. It says we never chill filter or add any color to our whiskeys finished and bottled by ASW Distillery Atlanta, Georgia. This is going to be bourbon whiskey refinished with hand harvested charred oak staves and that's going to be from the Georgia Heartwood. And boy does it give it some character. Next up we have another MGP product but they actually say it on the bottle. It says on the back distilled in Lynchburg, Indiana. This nine banded, the nine banded armadillo is the state mammal of Texas and a symbol of the independent and creative spirit of our home, Austin. Straight bourbon whiskey crafted from a blend of 51% corn, 45% wheat, 4% malted barley. That is that classic MGP weeded. weeded. Next up we have the whiskey that won whiskey of the year in 2020. This is Larceny, this is last year's B521. I am not an enormous fan of this bottle, but I haven't tried it too much flying, so maybe I'll change my mind on that. And last up, we have one of my absolute favorites, Weller Antique 107. Um, for some reason, this can be a polarizing bottle, and I think that might just be because of it being a little bit overhyped. But if this was a bottle that was on the shelf every day, and you could just buy it anytime you wanted, I feel like people would buy it, or you, you would buy it, because it's excellent. All right, so, um, all I think we can really do here is just dive right in and see what we think. So glass one, well, I don't think it, I don't know what glass number it is, but the first one we're tasting, which maybe you can see what the number is, I don't know. If you can, I'll just cut that. All right, so this is, um, this is kind of sweet. And this is, um, Man, I feel like I'm getting really good at this. Because just off the nose, I can tell you that this is Antique 107. Um, I just, it, it, it's got a Weller nose, it's it's sweet, it's cherries, it's a little bit of oak. But there's a little bit of a floral thing going on there too. And there's a little bit of a, ooh, okay. Because there's a little bit of a peanutty thing on that, and I don't normally get peanuts off of the Antique 107. That might actually be the Larceny. Okay, so peanuts and cherries, a uh, little bit of cinnamon on the finish. Long finish. And a little heat. Hmm. One of those two guys. Okay, this one smells like honey. It smells like it just opened a jar of honey. Maybe a little citrus as well. Okay. That is sweet and chocolatey and peanut buttery. Boy. I didn't think this was gonna be a run of peanut whiskeys, but uh, there's peanuts on that guy too. 
Um, yeah, that's really good. It seems lighter in proof than the first one. Let me reset my palate, go back in. I like to smell coffee in between. You know, smelling the coffee in between kind of reset my palate, tampered down that peanut butter that was really prominent. It's still there, but it's more subtle. The chocolate, there's chocolate on this guy. Um, and vanilla, and a lot of those classic bourbon, young bourbon sweetness things going on. Um, wow, I might be really bad at this one. There ain't no, gonna be no queen sweep tonight, guys. All right, next up we have number, well, the third glass. I can't call them by numbers because I, I labeled them differently than I normally do. They're labeled on the bottom of the glass, so I won't know the numbers, but normally I write underneath the number, um, you know, what it is, and then I mix them all up, and then I write the numbers on them. So I'm doing it a little different this time. Oh, okay. This is like mesquite and and honey and oh yeah, this is like like sweet barbecue sauce. Oh man, yeah, there's a lot of honey on this one too. These both have a lot of honey going on. That is just so good. That is, that is my favorite one so far. It's got a lot of character to it. There's more going on on that glass than there was on the first two. This one has a young bourbon sweetness, but with a really oaky, dry finish that lingers on and really soaks into your tongue and gives you, gives you a really, really dry finish. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, that's the hardwood. Uh, it's the hardwood. Um, I know it because it's finished with those oak staves, so it's gonna have that Maker's Mark wood finishing series quality to it where you get some young bourbon sweetness, but you also get those, um, those older bourbon notes because of the extra staves that have been put in the barrel. That I really like. I believe that to be my favorite so far. Yeah, that's mesquite. And, um, wow, man, uh, a lot of oak, very oaky, but also sweet and brown sugar and vanilla. Classic bourbon flavors, but drier and oakier and older. And it's probably not that old, but it tastes old. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Last one. Oh, let's, uh, Okay, so this one's got cherries as well. Um, cherries. Ooh, like cherry cola. Yeah, cherry cola. Hmm. Caramel. Caramel. This one's got a peanutty thing too. My gosh. I generally do feel like I get a peanutty thing off of weeded bourbons and um, Jim Beam products, of course, as well. Uh, basically, if it's made by Jim Beam or it's a weeded mash bill, I, I, taste, I tend to taste peanuts on it. Um, also off some of the Heaven Hill stuff too, is peanutty. Um, I, very, I never get that off of a turkey. I never get that off of, um, I never get that off of Barton. Never get a peanutty thing off of Barton. Well, drinking buddies, we're going to go back through these one more time. I'll probably fast forward through this part, but I'm going to kind of narrow down my guesses and then we'll come back for our final guesses.
Well, I have my final guesses. I'm guessing this is the Larceny because I feel like it's the highest proof. This is the Heartwood. This is the Nine Bandit and this is the 107. Good news. I don't hate the Larceny. Um, it's still not my favorite bottle. In fact, I believe this one to be the Larceny and I'm la I am ranking it last. But I am ranking it last because right now out of these, it is drinking the hottest, but I, that's probably not fair because it is the highest proof out of any of these. It's sitting at 121 proof. But I have tasted this up against stuff that is higher in proof and this one tastes hotter to me, generally. All right, so. 107, Nine Banded, Georgia Heartwood, Larceny. Let's see if I'm right. So our first glass over here is number two. Wow, so nine banded. Second glass over here is number four. That's the 107. So I mixed those two up. Number one, Georgia Heartwood. And number three is the Larceny. So what have we learned? If you're spending a lot of time Chasing 107. Maybe you might try this nine banded weeded bourbon single barrel. This one, oh, I didn't say that, but this one is a single barrel as well. But there is also a higher proof version of the nine banded weeded bourbon that is available out there. Um, so not just the single, the total wine store picks. Uh, if you have total wine in your area, check your total wine for nine banded weeded bourbon uh, because I just learned that it is probably just as good as 107. Um, my favorite was the Georgia Heartwood, and I did get that right. Um, my least favorite was the Larceny, um, but I, you guys know I'm not a big fan of this bottle in the first place. Probably wasn't fair to throw it in here, but this guy over here, man, uh, we have a new challenger, a non-Buffalo Trace challenger in our weeded bourbon Madness? I don't know. Our, ma our tournament. Our tournament. Our tournament of weeded bourbons. Uh, so far our winners are Old Rip 10, Weller 12 Year, and Fiddler Georgia Hartwood. MGP aged in Georgia with those finished staves. Um, you know, some, some big hitters have already been eliminated. You know, things like Weller Single Barrel, Weller 107. Um, Maker's Mark FAE02 has already been eliminated. And moving on, uh, everything we have is really quality. We're gonna keep this going. I think I'm gonna shoot for having five rounds and then we're gonna, uh, maybe six rounds and we'll do three and three or five rounds and we'll do all five and we'll pick one winner. But I think doing two more rounds, getting to six winners, doing a three and a three those two winners going up against each other might be the way to go. Why don't you tell me in the comments what you think I should do for that? Um, are you surprised by the results here? Um, are you gonna go pick up one of these bottles tomorrow at your local Total Wine? Because if I were you, I would. Uh, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.